We see it all over the financial news. We see it all over social media. Everybody talk about diversification, diversification, diversification. Uh, I'm going to give a secret out to everybody. Diversification will not make you rich. Diversification will keep you poor, especially when you start at zero. And I know people are going to say, what? Where did that come from? Everybody I listen to, all the Jim Cramers of the world, all of them say you need to have a diversified portfolio. Understand where they're at in life of people that's saying it. The people that's saying it are people that's already have millions of dollars. So you diversify to stay rich, not to get rich. So I'll give you a case in point. Warren Buffett, he put all of his cash in the Berkshire Hathaway. Till this day, that's where 99% of his money goes. That's where all of his investment dollars go. One entity, that one entity happens to own other things, but that one entity is what got him there. He didn't go diversify into gold and real estate and everything else. One equity. The equity itself diversified because of, you know, financial rules and stuff like that, as far as the stuff that they invested in, but he only put his money in one place. You go Greg Cardone. Greg Cardone didn't get to his quote unquote billionaire status from doing a whole bunch of different things to diversify to get there. Laser focus on one thing and that's real estate. And he just kept compounding on that real estate to get to that status. I'll give you another one. Elon Musk. Elon Musk was laser focused on individual companies. Then, you know, he went from PayPal, he went from PayPal, sold his PayPal shares and then he went into Tesla and then he went into SpaceX. But when he sold the PayPal, his stake in PayPal, that's when he had millions of dollars. So he created the other business to stay rich, not to get there. Like my first million was strictly in the stock market, 100% in the stock market on a few amount of stocks. It wasn't, oh, I got, I'm diversified 50 stocks. Spread my money thin. Spreading your money thin don't get you there. Putting your capital and one thing that you're heavily laser focused, invested in, knowing the financial statements, knowing how you're going to get your return on capital and keep investing in that one singular thing is how you're going to get there. Now, once you get rich and then you diversify just to just to alleviate some risk, risk once you get there, but not to get there. Alex, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense for the other people, too. Um, but I mean, diversification, the problem with it is just, you're spreading your money too thin, as we've talked about before. If you, especially if you're starting, like you said, I think it's a great point that you made when you said you diversify to stay rich. Kevin O'Leary does this, you know, there's other entrepreneurs that do this. There's Elon Musk, you know, he's, but he's the owner. I mean, he's, he has Tesla, he has um spacex he has all different types of companies that he owns but you diversify to stay rich because if one goes down you still have investments in other ones but when you're just starting off like i see people that start to try and get their foot in the door of investing and then they have 50 different individual stocks they have some silver they have some gold then they have their house and then they're trying to buy like um, like real estate shares, like REITs on, because they don't have enough money to actually buy real estate. And so like, they're just, they're all like spread all over the place. And if they would just take all of that money, just cash out everything that they have and put it into just one thing or two things and just focus on those two things, then they would make a lot of money. Like. We went over this on a video previously earlier today on, you know, buying gold and Bitcoin how or oil, how those aren't necessarily investments unless they're producing you in a cash flow. And I thought to myself, like, the only things I put my money into are stocks and real estate. Like, I don't have gold. I don't have crypto. And while I could have maybe made money on those, it's just i know what's making me money it's stocks and real estate so i would it wouldn't it wouldn't make much sense for me to just go off my path just so i can diversify to buy something that would 
only hold me back in expanding my real estate portfolio or expanding my stock portfolio for the time being. Now, once I have multi millions in those portfolios, maybe I will buy some crypto or something. But for the time being, I'm just going where the money is, where the money's at for me. Right. And, and I'm not, I'm not even going to uh, narrow it down to, Hey, you need to be in stocks or Hey, you need to be in real estate. If you want to be in crypto, fine, but go in. I mean, me, as a diversification head, I always say only put up to 10% of your network into crypto. Because me, the reason why I say that is because my knowledge of the crypto space is not as vast as my knowledge in the real estate game or in the stock market. Now, I have at times, when especially when I was starting out, I had 85 to 90% of my network in one stock. I did it. I mean, individual stock, not an ETF, an individual stock. But when I did that, it afforded me the ability to pay for a house cash when I sold some of the shares off. It afforded me the ability to pay for cars cash and things like that. But I got I got the money that I have. is I grew my money as fast as I did was because I was narrowly focused on one thing. And I kept doing the research, homework, research, homework, staying up all times of the day just to make sure my investment was going the way that it was going. And I'm not looking at the stock price, I'm looking at the underlying factors in the actual company. And that's how you get there, is putting a lot of money in fewer places will grow exponentially. So going to that thing of spreading it out, getting, you know, you got, let's say you got a $10,000 and you got like 60 stocks. And then you get, so let's just say you got you know, $100 or $1,000 in each of the stocks or whatever. If one stock goes up 30%, you made, you know, 1300 bucks. But if you had 10000 in there, then you made, now you, at, and it goes up 30%, now you're at $13,000. And then I know everybody want to jump into the stocks that the price is less. It's all about the numbers. If you win, if you have a hundred thousand dollars in Amazon, when Amazon pre-split and Amazon was at three thousand dollars a share, and it goes up fifty percent, you made fifty thousand dollars. That's the same as if you put a hundred thousand dollars in a penny stock and it goes up fifty percent, you made fifty thousand dollars. But people get the sticker shock of they they see the sticker shock or the price of a stock and be like, oh my god, that's too expensive. I can't afford it. The money don't matter. It's just the the stock price don't matter. If it has the, the potential to grow 50, 60, 100, 5x percent, it don't matter if it's a, a big price stock, i.e. a Berkshire Hathaway or Amazon or Tesla or anything like that, pre-split, NVIDIA, or if it's a penny stock, the percentages is still the percentages that is going to grow. So again, Narrow focus on one great company and putting your money there will take you a lot further than sitting here trying to diversify and thinking that your diversified portfolio when you got maybe $10,000 in there is going to grow you into millions because it's not. Yeah, and on the last point I want to make too, I liked what you said to me personally before on, you know, when you buy stocks and you buy real estate, it's not diversification in the sense of, you know, we're buying 50 different stocks. You know, you buy a select few of stocks and then you also have real estate and it's diversifying the asset classes because each asset class is different. So I do like the idea of diversifying the asset classes because each one will get affected in different markets. And if one is affected in one market, the other one might still be sustainable. So diversifying in asset classes is different, but when you're buying in the stock market, one thing that really just irks me is seeing people buying like 50 individual stocks and people trusting in that more rather than trusting in, the, in an ETF that has 500 plus companies in one or 100 plus companies in one. They think that's risky because on the screen, it looks like you're just buying one. But in reality, buying an ETF, buying the S&P 500, you're diversified enough with that. 
With all that being said, we'll see you in the next video. And please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, send all your hate mail to me. I'll be ready for it. See you guys.